So which forms to use? The basic form for reporting residential rental income and expenses is Schedule E, Form 1040, rather than the Schedule C. It looks much the same. It's an income statement type of form, but it's for the rental property. However, don't use that schedule to report a not-for-profit activity. See not uh, rented for profit later in Chapter 4. There are only uh, there are also other rental situations in which forms other than Schedule E would be used. Schedule E Form 1040. If you uh, rent buildings, rooms, or apartments and provide basic services such as heat and light, trash collection, etc., you normally report your rental income and expenses on the Schedule E. So notice it's not like with the rental property, it's not like you're doing nothing you know you're still doing some providing some of the services but you're not but hopefully the property the idea of the rental property is the property itself is going to be basically generating you know revenue and you and you might even hire obviously management companies to do some of this some of this other other stuff but that's far less actual service than in like a hotel kind of situation so list your total income, expenses, and depreciation for each rental property. So we're going to have breaking out our rental property, and then we're not going to lump all the rental property together as if it was one business. Generally, you're going to take each rental property and have another kind of Schedule E, basically income statement per property. So be sure to enter the number of fair rental and personal use days on line two. Uh, so you know, if, if you used it for personal use, we may get into that later, but we saw that that kind of muddy buddies up the situation because now you might have like a vacation property that you that you rented and you used for personal use. Now you've got to break out, you know, the business versus personal as opposed to a property that's 365 days a year rental, which is, you know, more straightforward, clearly. So if you have more than three rental or royalty properties complete and attached as many Schedule E uh, as are needed to separately list all the properties. However, fill in lines 23A uh, through 26 on only one Schedule E. So in other words, you're gonna have a Schedule E's, as many as you need to, to do the income statement kind of format of the Schedule E. But then the bottom line of the Schedule E, the bottom part, which is gonna help to kind of figure your passive you know, limitations and whatnot, uh, will kind of group together all the schedule e's will summarize together there so in other words if you had one property that had income and another property had a loss you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna report them separately but when you net them together then you might have had income right so 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 then you might not be subject to any of the loss limitations uh in that case you can kind of you can generally net out for example two properties that are both kind of passive in nature you would think that you would be able to take the losses against the other property. The question would be, can you take the other losses against other income like W-2 income or something like that? Okay, so the figure on lines 23A through 26 on the Schedule E should be the combined totals of all properties reported on your Schedule E. On Schedule E, page one, line 18, enter the depreciation you are claiming for each property. Uh, you may also need to attach form 46 I mean, sorry, 4562 to claim some or all your depreciation. See form 4562 later for more information. So if you have a loss from your rental real estate activity, you may also need to complete one or both of the following forms. You got the form 69, I mean, sorry, 6198. Those are the at-risk limitations. See at-risk rules later. Also, you can check out publication 925, and then you've got the form 8582. These are the passive activity loss limitations, and you can see passive activity limits later. And we'll get into those in the, in the next presentation. So page two of Schedule E is used to report income or loss from partnership, S-corporation, estates, trusts, and real estate mortgage investment uh, conduits. If you need to use page two of Schedule E and you have more than three rental or royalty properties, be sure to use page two of the same Schedule E you use to enter the combined totals for your rental activity on page one. Also include 
the amount from line 26, part one, and the quote, total income or loss, end quote, on line 41, part five. Okay, we'll take a look at forms later. Form 4562, who must complete and attach form 4562 if you are claiming the following depreciation in your rental activity. So depreciation, including the special depreciation allowance on property placed in service during 2022. So if you have special depreciation, which is, we talked a little bit when we, when, when, when we went over depreciation is like that upfront depreciation for certain types of property might qualify for, then you'd have to attach another form uh, for that. Depreciation on listed property, such as a car, regardless of when it was placed in service. Otherwise, figure your depreciation on your own worksheet. You don't have to attach these computations to your return, but you should keep them in your records for future reference. Those depreciation schedules do become important. Usually they're gonna be generated with the help of tax software. It's kind of interesting to me that sometimes they don't require the schedules be, uh, because you would think <laughs> you think they'd want those, you know. But obviously, if you're picking up a new client, that becomes an issue because if you get a, if you get the prior year tax return, if it doesn't include the depreciation schedules, then that's going to be a problem because those things are going to be you know needed for a long period of time. So whenever you pick up a new client or something like that, if you're doing rental property or anything with depreciation, I would suggest you want to make sure you get the depreciation schedules from the prior uh, return and that you that, that then you enter the prior return depreciation schedules trying to match what was reported in the prior year and then roll it forward into the current year so that the software can kind of help you out. Uh, you may also need to attach form 4562 if you are claiming a section 179 deduction. That's another one of those upfront, like the special uh, deduction amortizing costs that began during 2022 or claiming any other deduction for a vehicle, including the standard mileage rate or lease expenses. You can see publication 946 for information on preparing form 4562.